Okay guys, I'm here with Alyssa from Boron and she's going to give us the real scoop on what's going on with the FDA and homeopathy. Well, thanks for asking. We're getting a lot of questions about that here at uh, the conference with all the bloggers. And um, I'm here to say it's not as dire as you would think in the, that it's being portrayed in the news. So the FDA started this process two years ago. Um, they looked at our sales, they looked at the number of complaints that the Poison Control Center was getting, and they looked at the number of new products being put out on the shelf. And it's been 25 years since they looked at their regulatory body that governed this, this industry. Um, we spoke with them, we organized panels, we brought in the Queen of England's physician over to speak with them. Um, they were very receptive, very um, cordial with us. They took all of our considerations into, uh, um, well, into consideration. Mm -hmm. And they took two years to think about this. And what we told them was that our sales numbers are lower than they think, um, based on barcodes rather than their surveys of what people thought they bought and their memory of what they bought. Um, the Poison Control Center data um, we looked into that, we hired a consultant, and um, the numbers weren't exactly what they were. They, they were elevated. Um, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of confusion what homeopathy is, and maybe it's not being reported correctly. So some people were reporting uh, like that they were poisoned by something that wasn't really homeopathy? Well, yes, and also remember that a call to the Poison Control Center might just be a call. Hey, I took this. You know, should I be concerned? Right. Well, nothing's happened yet, mm. but you know, my, my kid ate the whole thing. Should I be concerned? Right. You know, it's it's not reporting an adverse reaction. It's okay. just it's just a phone call. Yeah. Um, and then the other issue they had was uh, a lot of new products out, which we do bundle things and put them in different packaging and different units and like for cold or for flu right. or whatever. Right. But there's only been nine new active ingredients accepted into the pharmacopoeia, which is the official rule book. For uh, homeopathy? For, in the past 10 years, only nine new ingredients. So we've explained all of this to the FDA. They received 9,000 comments. Thank you for everybody who submitted their comments. Wow. And um, they took two years to think about this. And Why then, two years? 9,000 comments. Oh, so they had to go through them all, you mean? Yes. And, okay. Yeah. But still two years. Okay. I guess that's a lot, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in December, they came out and uh, they said, okay, here's, here's our new guidance. And it's very, very similar to the old guidance. Um, there are some comments that we, you ha we have until March 20th to submit the comments. Um, there's some things in the old guidance that really define what a homeopathic product is mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that that's in the new guidance, but um, it's, it's, it's not as sensational, it's not as alarming as a lot of people might think listening to the media. Um, they're going after some outliers, there's some people putting, some companies putting products on the shelf for RX conditions, chronic conditions, conditions that you need a doctor's supervision. And those type of products shouldn't be on the shelf for you to treat yourself, not under a doctor's care. Doesn't mean that homeopathy doesn't work for that, just you should see a doctor and be under their care. And there's a, there's a bunch of other problems like that too. We in the industry, we're supporting that. If they want to clean up our industry and this is helping keep the public healthy, then we're okay with this. So we're still working with them, and I think everything's going to be fine. The vast majority of products are going to be still accessible to our loyal fan base, and again, thank you so much for, for supporting us. Yeah, that's great. So let me ask you this. You probably have to be super careful, just like I do as a blogger. Like, I can't say in a post, you know, this is gonna, cure you or this is going to heal you so you guys have to be especially careful of that because we're not doctors and we're not dealing with drugs or whatever Absolutely. so it's probably tricky for you to how I guess how do you show people how they can be helped by homeopathy if you have to be so careful careful of your words well we have an app for that okay <laughs> interesting um, I didn't know that Boron Medicine Finder is a free app mm -hmm. and you can um, 
it has 420 different symptoms on there and you can look up I didn't know you it. had that yep it's it's new out like within a year and a half or okay something. but how what's the wording like this could support you as you what how do you say it well we're different than we're regulated as a drug and vitamins minerals herbal supplements, amino acids. Oh, those, those are different, things, aren't they? Those are regulated as a food supplement. Mm. We are. We have to make a claim. We have to say bosilococcinum uh, relieves flu symptoms. Mm. Whereas, so you can say it? Yes, whereas um, a concoction of like zinc and um, uh, vitamin C and you know that kind of uh, uh, Which product. is also helpful. Yes. Yes, it is. But they can say it different. They have to say they it differently. They have to say, well, we support immune. We, we're an immune booster. Yeah. I am not allowed to say homeopathy supports immune boosting. That's too vague. Oh. So it's, it's a really different Really interesting. I didn't know that. I thought homeopathy had to be as careful as vitamins. But you are saying you have more leeway or you actually have to be more specific. We have to be more specific. We have to have a... a condition on our product not oh. just a general for healthy aging for immune boosting you know things well like what that. about this what if I know that a lot of homeopathic remedies have more than one use yes what do you do about that um, we you can say as much as you can fit on those tiny little blue labels oh okay <laughs> we only say one use because our labels are usually so small we say yeah. the most common or yeah. what it's best for the yeah. primary thing. and you don't want to confuse people yes. and that kind of stuff too yes. that is there, also interesting there is this um, what I referenced before a pharmacopoeia yeah the um, homeopathic pharmacopoeia of the United States HPUS if you flip over any of the boron's boxes you'll mm -hmm. see it says like Arnica Montana 30C HPUS. That means it's made in accordance with this recipe book, if you will. That's mm -hmm. accepted by the FDA, and that's why that's what we're governed by. Mm -hmm. We have to manufacture it according to that, and we have to label it, and um, it has to adhere to um, our claims. Have to adhere to what's in that mm -hmm. traditional book. Very interesting. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Sure.